Good morning and welcome to Palestine United Methodist Church. If you're joining us on Facebook, we're glad you're with us. And for those that are here, I'm glad y'all are here too. It's good to see y'all. Jeffrey, we're glad you're with us. We love your haircut and your Hawaiian shirt you have on. You're looking mighty good today. It's been a while since you've been here, hadn't it? But you're looking good. Announcements are in the bulletin. Um, one thing, right after church today, we'll be having our painting or art. And um, so anyway, if you've not joined us, it's $10 for the supplies. And join us if you'd like. This is what we're going to be doing today, or what Casey has planned for us to do today. It may not look like this by the time we get done, but we're going to have fun anyway. But we had fun last time, didn't we? Yes, it was, it's, it's, it's fun stuff. Um, eight, well, Wednesday nights we have a uh, Bible study on Facebook Live at 6.30 p.m. And coffee fellowship time is at 8.15, 8.30 on Sunday mornings. We always have a little breakfast and some good coffee that Bonnie has made. And August 27th, which is a week from yesterday, I can't believe time is just like flying by, but a week from yesterday, this coming Saturday, we'll be having a church cleanup day. And um, I believe it's at 9 a.m., so if you're able and you'd like to come help clean church, come on. Uh, September 11th is homecoming. And we have an 11 a.m. service with fellowship meal to follow. Yard sale is October 14th, 8 to 4, and October 15th, 8 until noon. November 4th is charge conference. That will be at Greenbrier United Methodist. And anywhere from two to four people that are on the administrative board can go with us. That would be Sharon. Tim can go if you'd like. Marinell. Glenn, if you'd like. Doesn't have to be a whole lot of us, just a few of us. Um, November 12th is Willow Oaks Fundraiser, and that'll be like a Christmas bazaar. November 20th is Harvest Dinner, and then Christmas, and the year's going to be over with, hard to believe. Um, any other announcements? Let's bow and join in together in the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today from a confusing world around us. We come confessing that we need your wisdom and discernment to have the faith we need to live in this world. We come seeking your touch to heal the spots within us where we need healing, courage to face what lies ahead, and the faith and conviction to seek your face each and every day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And our call to worship is um, Psalm 71, 1 through 6, and that's on page 794 in our hymnal. <clears throat> I think Tim put some glue on these pages is what I think. <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 71, 1 through 6. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. To be, be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress, to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O oh my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O oh Lord, are my hope. 
my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have learned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. Amen. And I think it's time for Jim to give us some of his thoughts. Effective listening. We were always talking about speakers. You know, we judge our pastors on various different things, but my primary judgment on a pastor is what they do from the pulpit. That's just one thing. And there are all the kinds of, we, we have fun poking things at our pastor's exceptions. You know. <laughs> Sometimes we say they, they talk too long. There's also one that says that if you have insomnia, go to such and such church. They'll cure it. <laughs> so we always talk about the speakers, but we don't ever talk about listening. Luke addresses this. Chapter 8, verses <clears throat> 9 and 10. Let me get closer to my eyes. His disciples asked him, what was the meaning of the story? And they, they were talking about the story of the scattering of the seeds. And he had just told that story. So they're asking him, okay, what are, you, what are you talking about? And Jesus replied, You have been permitted to understand these, these secrets of the kingdom of God, but I am using these stories to conceal everything about it from the outsiders so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Talking about, I'm sure, Isaiah and some of the other prophecies. They see what I do, but they don't see. They hear what I say, but they don't understand. There was a minister one time talking to a group of young people, and he said, he said, it's some kind of convocation they were at. And he said, I have so many things I want to tell you. I've got, I've just been writing them down, storing all of this up so I can, I'm looking so forward to this, and I just don't know really where to begin. The young man in the back of the group says, hey, start toward the end. We're always talking about the speakers, not about the listeners. Communication is a two-way street. Communication is part of our service. We talked about liturgical services before. We're supposed to participate. It takes an articulate speaker, and it takes a willing listener. Jesus, I'm just going to put these away. Jesus said that in order to understand the, the parable that he gave, the seeds, the, the sowing of the seeds, some fell on hard ground, some fell in the thorns, some fell in the soft, shallow uh, soil, and the others fell in the fertile soil. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Romans, the unbelievers had no idea what he's talking about because he's using that as a parable. They took him at face value. That's why so many of the Romans thought that, uh, that Christianity was a cult, a, a cannibalistic cult, because Christ said, this is my body and this is my blood. So that the, the unbelievers took everything at face value. But think about it for just a moment. Briscoe, this all came from the book I've mentioned to you before. Briscoe brings up an interesting point. The 12 that were with him all the time are the ones asking him this question. They still were not listening. And when, when Christ says about they see but they don't see, they hear but they don't hear, he was also talking about his disciples because they were with him every moment. The other thing Briscoe points out was that, sure, there were fishermen, there were other occupations, but the primary occupation back then was to, to constantly look for food. So most of these people were farmers. So in their mind's eye, they could see what Christ was talking about, the scattering the seeds. And so they knew that if it fell, didn't fall in the right place, it's not going to germinate. It's not going to produce anything. So Christ said, in order for you to understand, you've got to have a good 
moral heart. That's the first start. Your heart's got to be right. You have to be a receptive listener, so that involves the ears. And the third thing is that we have to be right up here. We can't be thinking about, what time does the game start today? Uh, I'm supposed to meet so-and-so to have lunch. At, I'm, I've been guilty of that. But when we come in the back doors, or we come in from having our social time up there, which I love every morning, I mean, Sunday mornings, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of putting it all together so that when we say the affirmation of faith, we actually hear everything we're saying. When we hear the re reading of the Word, we actually hear the reading of the Word. And so Christ is saying, in order for us to receive the seed, we've got to have the fertile soil. He was talking about people. He wasn't talking about the ground. Those that have those ingredients will receive the seed. And if it's in fertile soil, we'll flourish. The blessings will flow. Maybe if our faith is not quite as strong and the seed goes into a shallow body, there'll be blessings, but it won't be near like it would be if our body is right and receptive to hear it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Timothy has agreed to read scripture for us this morning. You better get up here. Malcolm's not with us this morning, so Tim's going to read scripture this morning. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. This morning's reading is from the book of Jeremiah, verses 4 through 10. Everybody there? <laughs> Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. To or I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, O oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. And our hymn of thanksgiving is...
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, Gloria Patri, please. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, <coughs> without end. Amen. Amen. Have you seen it? <coughs> Thank you. Our first song. Can you cut that? No, it just falling. <coughs> Thank you. Our prayer concerns are on the back of the bulletin. I'd like to. Um, and the Robert Duffy family, Robert passed away early Wednesday morning, a um, friend of mm -hmm. ours, Jimmy Lovett family, and was it Tuesday, that was it Monday or Tuesday that Jimmy passed away, do you remember? Tuesday, I think, and a um, friend of Casey's dad, our son, and Ann Woodard family, how is Riley doing? Doing good? All right. Good deal. I'm glad. And um, David Herbez, our brother-in-law, had um, a little <laughs> outpatient surgery Wednesday, and they made it home, and he was doing pretty good. So <clears throat> I want to remember them. Ken, um, Ken Purvey with stomach cancer, Edith Lund. Ricky, how are you doing? A lot better. Do we need to leave you on the prayer list? Okay. <coughs> and Barbara's doing okay. She just had some canon duties to do before some vegetables had to be trashed. Is that right? Mm-hmm. We're glad Glenn's back. I had to ask what his name was this morning. Are there any others that we'd like to update or add? Yes, ma'am. Um, people are working in the surgery weren't very well. He should be back here in one week. Okay, great. That's great. That's Hugo Ortez, and his surgery went well. Mm -hmm. Back to work tomorrow? Yes. Good deal. Yes, ma'am. Family of Michael Gray. That automobile accident. Anyone else? I've just been following him a little on Facebook, um, but I, I know that Ben Ningo would really appreciate us keeping um, Africa, mm -hmm. his his area in Kenya, and his church in our prayers. Is he? Well, hello, Ben. Hello, we're, Ben. We're, we're, glad, we're glad you're watching us. And we appreciate everything that you do in Africa for, for God and for the church that you serve and the families that surround you. Uh, Gary and Linda aren't with us this morning. Gary has a procedure tomorrow that he's preparing for today.
and that's your Aunt Beverly and fluid on her lungs and don't know what's going on. All right. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? My sister, Candace A.G. Yeah. She's been in the hospital for 23 days, and she finally got home yesterday. Really? Well, I sure am glad she's home, Robert. She has, because she, it, it hadn't been quite that long since she was in the hospital. That's right. She's been in the hospital three or four times this past year. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you. Anyone else? Do we have... You okay? Um, any joys we'd like to share? Pardon? This rain, yes. that's a joy. We had good rain yesterday. Yes, we did. We were in the middle of the river. You were in the middle of the river? Yes. Thunder, lightning, pouring down there. Oh, my gosh. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Anyone else have a joy? We had wonderful fellowship last night with our daughter and our grandkids and our great-grandbaby. They all came over and had spaghetti and we played games afterwards. It was really nice. Cool. Our, our uh, one granddaughter, Katie, it was her last weekend before going back to college. So she's going to be busy starting Monday. Yeah. So it was, it was nice. Somebody else. Somebody else going to be going back to school tomorrow. It's about time she went back to school. She just become lazy this summer. <laughs> not hardly. That is not a lazy child right no, there. I know, she's been busy all summer long, from babysitting to dog sitting to working in Willow Oaks, daycare. She's a, she's a busy girl. Anyone else? Joyce? Yes, thank the Lord. I have a sore knee, and I had a U-Haul one day, and the Lord was willing to pray, don't ride. I'll be moved. So he can... Thank goodness. Jim gets to move. Before the deadline. That's good. That's good. We're glad. How are you set on people for helping? Got it lined up. Lined up. Thank you, yeah. Well, anything that we can do, let us know. Anyone else? <clears throat> Let's bow. Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us. We thank you for the first breath that we took when we awoke this morning. We thank you for the family that you've given us, the friends that we have, this church and the brothers and sisters that you have given us here as well as others throughout this world. There's so many times that we take for granted all the wonderful things that you have given us. We take for granted Sometimes the grace and the mercy that you pour out to us. Because there's sometimes we, we just don't see how anybody could care anything for us. There's times that, that we don't even want to look ourselves in the eye, much less anybody else. There's times when the confusion of this world is overbearing, and we don't know which way to turn. There's times when we're put down by others, and we just soon stay down. But 
I think probably the most horrible thing for us to forget about is the amount of love that you have for us. We know it can raise mountains, but sometimes it's hard to raise us. Father, forgive us when we doubt, when we trust, when we don't, when we don't think that we are worthy of your grace, your mercy, your love, or any of the other blessings that you pour out on us. Forgive us over and over again. For doubting your love and your goodness. Continue to help raise us up, to stretch us out, and to be the people that you want us to be. Father, there's many names that are on our prayer list. There's others within this community and throughout this world that you know of that need our prayers. We ask today that for those who are in grief, that you bring them peace and comfort. We ask for others who are undergoing medical procedures, tests, surgeries, illnesses, that you be with the medical staff, their families, to bring healing to them. For others, Father, who who may be having relationship problems, I ask that you bring peace and understanding to all those situations. I ask all of this in Christ's name who taught his disciples to pray most perfectly by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive us trespass against us. <coughs> Temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture this morning is from the 13th chapter of Luke, beginning at verse 10. It's Luke chapter 13, beginning at verse 10.
<clears throat> now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the manger? And lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Thanks be to God. On the surface, the story in today's gospel sounds like just another healing story. You know, there's just many of them in the Bible. And we read them, and sometimes they seem to kind of intertwine with each other. But this one's a little bit different. You know, you've, you've got the, the lame man that was by the pool of Bethesda. He couldn't walk. Blind, oh, I'm sorry, blind man. And then you've got a lame man whose friends took him up, you know, on the rooftop to lower him down into where Jesus was, whatever. There's all these healing stories. This one is so different because this is the one that says her spirit. Had an ailment. She was ailing in her spirit. It wasn't like she'd cut her arm or like she had a bad case of arthritis. It wasn't any of that. It was her spirit that was sick. I, I enjoyed Jim's message this morning because, you know, it makes me think that a lot of times when, when our spirit is a little on the sick side, we can't hear. We don't want to listen or read what the Scripture says. We don't want to know that God loves us because we don't think we're worthy enough. And we don't want to hear that. But just listen. Jesus had compassion on that woman on the Sabbath day, and he knew that there was going to be flack from the religious leaders because he was doing a no-no. He was healing on the Sabbath. He was getting Satan out of this woman on the Sabbath day. Is there not a better day to do that? I mean, come on. This woman was so heavily burdened by the spirit that was within her, she was completely bent over. She couldn't stand. And just think for a minute, how do you feel when you are down and out, when you are... whether something's been done to you, whether you've done something to somebody else, how do you feel when you need forgiveness? Do you feel like standing up and dancing? When there's something weighing heavy in your heart, how do you feel? Do you feel like darkness has surrounded you and you're so bent over? I mean, I can feel it even in my shoulders sometimes, and I think, 
Mama used to poke me, poke me in the back with her fingers, like right back here, make me stand up straight. And I'm like, oh, don't do that to me anymore, woman. But sometimes we need God to come along and do the same thing to us. Because generally, we're not going to be listening to him, so he may as well touch us. You know, we've, we've all heard stories or seen movies where somebody would stop speaking because they had been through a traumatic experience. Maybe it was something that happened when they were a child. Maybe it was something that happened as an adult. I knew a lady one time that her hair turned white over just a matter of weeks because of a very traumatic experience that she had. And no, it wasn't me. But we hear things like that, you know, and we wonder. Could a psychological problem really cause that? Could a spiritual problem really cause that to happen within us? I think a lot of times we we think that our spirit is separate from our physical bodies, and it's not. If your spirit is not where it needs to be, then you're going to feel sick. You're going to feel down and out. You're going to feel like this bent-over woman. She was like that for 18 years. Something happened in her past. It doesn't say what, but something happened that led her to feel and maybe even physically be bent over to the point that all she could do was watch feet and knees. And how much better, maybe in her situation, after 18 years, to be able to only see somebody's feet and somebody's knees. Because you know what? Feet and knees can't talk back to you. Feet and knees can't tell you what a bad person you are. Feet and knees are not going to spread ugly, nasty rumors about you. People will. And I think if I was in her situation, that's what I would want to do. I wouldn't want to look at anybody in the eye. I wouldn't want to see them spreading stuff. We've all heard... The term paralyzed by fear. Dead of a broken heart, worried himself sick. That's how we can become when our spirits are not connected like they should be. And Jim's right. The best way to to fix that problem is to listen. Not, Not listen to me necessarily, but listen to what God is saying. Listen to him. Read what he says. Read a true story this week about about a man who had an arm that he couldn't move. And he just kind of held it up here because he couldn't do anything with it. He went and talked to his pastor about it. And he said, you know, what happened several years ago, I struck my daughter to the point that she had to have medical attention. It took her a little while to get over it. But he said, ever since then, I've not been able to use this arm. So the pastor figured out, you know, it's not a physical problem. It's a spiritual problem that he's got. So the pastor held, held his arm, just put his hand on his arm. He started praying for him and asking God to help let him know that he forgave him for what he had done. His daughter had already forgiven him. 
But the man didn't think that God could forgive him. The pastor said that when he was holding his, his arm, he could feel that arm loosening up because he was accepting the forgiveness that God was giving him. We need to listen, because God's forgiveness is out there, if we just listen. It's in the raindrops. It's in the sunshine. It's in the birds when they sing. We got hummingbirds coming to our storm door in the back, Looking in like, I know you got some food out here for me, but I want some more. I want to make sure we got plenty of it. That's how we need to be with God. We need to make sure that our spirits are completely and totally fed all the time, every day. Not just on Sunday, but every single day of the week. You know, I, I, know, I know I've told this story before, but whenever... I read this particular scripture, I can't help but think about Cora Couts. Cora, Cora is Clay Wooten's aunt, and Clay is my friend, passed away this past October. Well, this October will be a year ago. And Cora was one of his two aunts that he lived with. Whenever I would go over there, which was pretty much every Sunday back in the day, wasn't it, Bonnie? Cora would always make me feel like I had just come home. Clay would be at the Catholic Church because he was Catholic, even though his grandparents were stout Jewish. He, he got around, kind of like Martha did. You know, we always said that she was going for every denomination because she wouldn't make sure she had her a seat in heaven. But Cora loved her to pieces. Her arms, I bet you, were 10 feet long because those things would wrap around you and hold you like you were home. Well, Cora used to come to Palestine when she was a young woman. Cora and I would, would talk. She couldn't hear very well, but we'd talk. She talked about being baptized, but um, she didn't think that, that God would accept her. She didn't think that God loved her. And after several years, she had been abused when she was a small girl. She felt that God would never forgive her for what had happened to her. So one day, at her kitchen table, She was baptized, and you could not tell what water from the baptism was running down her cheeks from the tears that she was shedding. And at the same time, you could see a peace come over her like I've never seen before. But it was like everything just relaxed from the head all the way down. And that day she joined this church. I've been involved in some really cool baptisms. Cora's. was one of those. 
it was as if God had placed his hand on her head and said, it's okay, my daughter, it's okay. You can stand up now. Our minds and our bodies are connected spiritually. That's the way God made us. We don't just have a heart that's separate from our spirit. We don't have a mind that's separate from that. Everything is connected within our bodies because God wants us to turn right around and praise and glorify him. Jesus called to the bent over woman. He told her she was healed, but she did not immediately stand up. It really wasn't until he actually touched her that she stood up. It wasn't until she let go of the spirit that held her back and held her bent and held her down that she was able to stand up and turn right around and praise. You know, it's really hard to praise God when you feel like you've been over and you got darkness around you and there's stuff you can't let go of. It's really hard to do that, whether you've done it or somebody's done it to you, or whether it's just thoughts in your mind that Satan put there to begin with to make you think that you're not worthy, because he's, got it. he's, he's, he's good at doing that. I really love listening to Bishop T.D. Jakes, I think we've talked about that before, haven't we? And I love what he has to say about letting go and letting God. If you're holding on to anger, let it go. If you're holding on to a broken relationship, let it go. If you're holding on to something you cannot control, let it go. If you're holding on to something that was never intended in your life, let it go. If you're holding on to past hurts or pains, let it go. If you're holding on to a bad attitude, Lord help me, let it go. If you keep trying to help someone who won't help themselves, let it go. If you're feeling down and out, stressed and depressed, let it go. Let the past be the past. Forget the former things. God is doing a new thing. It's his battle to fight. Not ours. But first, we got to give it to him and let it go. It's simple, but we don't want to listen to who we need to listen to. If we can't trust him enough to take care of our stuff, how are we going to grow? If we can't trust him enough, how are we going to be the people that he wants us to be? If we can't trust him enough, how will we ever be enough for him? If you've been burdened too long, 
you feel like you've been over. I mean, you know, we've, we've got today here in the pew, you can come up to the altar. If you want to stand up straight, turn around and praise God, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Mine too. We can come and let it go. Doesn't matter how big or how small. He already knows. The altar's open. If you feel burnt, if you feel bent over, let it go today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the light of God surround us, the love of God enfold us, the power of God protect us, the presence of God watch over us, so that wherever we are, God is there too. Amen. <laughs>